The frequency of coral bleaching in Singapore is rising in Singapore's waters. Now, latest research shows that so far each year, as much as 40% of the corals at the intertidal areas have been affected, and in the reef crest areas, up to 30% are affected. Experts say that the level of bleaching is not as high as back in 2016. Then, an average of 60% of coral colonies bleached across various sites. But the interval between significant bleaching is becoming shorter, and that is a concern. Bleaching occurs when a coral turns white as a result of being stressed by changes in conditions like temperature, light, and nutrients. For more, we're joined by Assistant Professor Huang Danwei from the Department of Biological Sciences at NUS. Good evening, Danwei. Why has the interval between significant coral bleaching events been shortened? Good evening. Uh, I, we think that the uh, in, increase in frequency of bleaching is associated with the increase in sea surface temperatures of about 0.25 degrees Celsius per decade. Um, the, there is a lot of variation in the temperature, but often when that extreme temperature um, high exceeds a bleaching threshold, uh, in Singapore it's about 30.8 uh, degrees Celsius, uh, corals will start to bleach. And the longer the temperature stays high, uh, the, the more likely that those corals will bleach. And this has become more frequent because of the increase in uh, the sea surface temperatures over the last uh, three to four decades. And is that why then that the levels of coral bleaching this year are worse than the last two years? In the last two years, we did, did not uh, observe uh, much bleaching. Uh, in fact, bleaching is, uh, is a natural phenomenon. It happens uh, whenever temperatures are higher. In a particular year, you have certain vari uh, variation in temperature. In May and June, uh, temperatures would be slightly higher than normal. Um, so we expect to see some paling of the corals uh, where some of the, this symbiotic algae gets expelled, but not as uh, serious as what we have seen in 2016. Uh, in, 20, uh, in this year, we are seeing a slightly uh, elevated levels of bleaching. We call this a moderate bleaching uh, event. So uh, what we are seeing is uh, definitely an anomaly. Uh, we expect usually to see these events uh, occurring in uh, coincident with uh, El Nino events, for instance. Um, and that was the case in 2016, but not um, this year. And what are the chances of coral actually recovering once it has been bleached? Or, or does this condition tend to you know, mean the end for the coral? Corals can recover, uh, and different species have different propensities to recover. Uh, it also depends on the amount of time that the corals are without uh, the algal symbionts. So in, for instance, in 2016, around half of the corals that bleach recovered fully within about four months. So uh, from June to October, they recovered fully. Most of the remaining corals that uh, bleach, uh, they actually recovered over the next few months. So uh, by about 2017, the middle of 2017, most have recovered. About 20% of them died, so there's a chance that uh, corals can die because they starve uh, without those symbionts. The, uh, the algae, uh, with, they cannot make food for the corals, so they starve to death. Um, and that actually contributes to about the same amount of loss of abundance of corals over the year. Um, after the bleaching event, uh, new baby corals can also colonize those dead areas. So coral abundance has actually mostly recovered. Um, but take note that this, this actually took around two to three years um, and, and sort of fully recovered in uh, 2019 when we have been monitoring them. And I also note that the recovery of living corals uh, uh, does not happen at the same rate among different coral reefs. So certain sites would uh, recover a bit slower, certain sites will recover a bit faster. And Dunway, do remind us uh, what kind of role corals play in our ecosystem here. Now, corals uh, are animals, um, but they form vast reef structures uh, and they can host large numbers of species, uh, marine species. Many of these species, like uh, fish, they can be harvested in countries uh, in the region, perhaps not in Singapore, but in the region. But because reefs uh, in this entire region of Southeast Asia and South China Sea are really well connected, they're connected by surface currents, uh, our reefs can be important source populations for um, other areas 
of biodiversity and even for commercially important species. These large structures, they also have a protective function against very strong waves during storms, minimizing erosion to our coastlines. And um, okay, so well, thank you think, very much for your thoughts. Uh, have, we'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid, Professor Huang. And that was Assistant Professor Huang Danwei from NUS.